Hi, I'm Dr. Liz Whitney. I'm a veterinarian and I've been caring for dogs and cats for the past 20 years. If you're like myself and the majority of my clients, you consider your pets very valuable members of your family. Because our companion animals can't tell us how they're feeling, I'd like to demonstrate some simple things that you can do at home to check for the health and well-being. Before we get started, it's important that you know that none of the things we'll see here today can take the place of a good health exam by your veterinarian. Today we're going to focus on the examination of the dog. This is William and he's a Maltese. Realize there are probably a lot of the things that you notice every day that you don't even think about. And those are things like your pet's appetite, their general attitude, how they're walking, just a number of things that are probably good indicators that you aren't even thinking about. But we're going to show you some of the things that you might not think about every day. What you want to be able to do is when you look down on your dog, you should see a little bit of indentation at the waist. If you're not seeing that, then it could be that your dog is a little overweight. It could also be that they've got a really fluffy hair coat though. So you want to make sure that you get your hands on the dog and that you feel, okay? So what we want to be able to feel is just a little bit of skin and tissue over the ribs, but you do want to be able to feel the ribs. They shouldn't be sticking out or prominent, but you want to be able to easily feel them without having to search or press really hard, okay? If you can't press easily and feel them, then it probably means that your dog's overweight. Okay, the next thing that you want to think about is their hair coat. And you want to make sure that the pet's hair coat is kept dry and clean and free of any mats or stickers or grass seeds. You don't want any of those type of things in the hair coat. You also want to make sure that you don't have external parasites on the dogs, which would be like fleas or ticks. And of course, you're probably aware there are lots of things you can do to prevent fleas and ticks. Um, you should make sure that there aren't any lumps or bumps or any new type of growths or sores that maybe you haven't seen in the past. Um, as you just kind of gently run your hands along the dog, you check for any of those abnormal swellings, okay? And I don't feel anything at all wrong with William. He seems to be really healthy. Okay, the other thing is you don't want to have any bad odors. Usually a bad odor is an indication of a problem unless maybe they've been sprayed by a skunk or they've rolled in something really nasty, which we know dogs tend to do sometimes. The feet and the toenails are something that you want to pay attention to. Um, if I pick up little William's feet here, you can see he has white toenails. William's toenails are just a little bit long, but they're not too bad. Um, the average dog probably needs to have their nails trimmed approximately every four to eight weeks. Um, you can reduce the amount of time that, um, that you need to have those done by doing walks on asphalt or pavement so that it helps to keep the nails worn a little bit. Um, some dogs do have a little dew claw here on the inside, and be sure that you're aware if those have not been removed those also need to be trimmed. Now some people are brave enough to do nail trims at home and they can do that successfully because their pets are well mannered for it but oftentimes you need to go to a groomer or to a veterinary professional to have those taken care of. Touch it it's a little cool to the touch. A really dry or crusty nose can sometimes be an indication of a problem. Um, okay we're gonna move then to his eyes. This is typical of Maltese where you get a little bit of staining around the eyes and that's okay, it's normal, but you want to make sure that the eyes are both wide open, there's no squinting, and that if there is any crustiness or sleep in the eyes that you keep that clean with a moist cloth. You want to make sure it's a damp, soft cloth. If you do see any squinting or you see any evidence of yellow, thick discharge, that's a reason you might want to visit the veterinarian. The mouth. Um, he's recently had a dentistry. As you can see, the gums are really nice and pink. That's really good. If you ever think your dog's sick, one thing you want to do is look in their mouth and make sure that they're not pale or that there aren't maybe any bruises or darkness to the gums. That can be an indication of a problem. Another thing the vet might ask you to do is to just gently blanch out the color of the gum like so and see how fast it takes to refill. It should be less than two seconds in a normal healthy dog. Okay. Then as far as we were talking about how dental disease is a major source of other diseases in dogs and cats, the bacteria that accumulates in the mouth can cause infection of the heart and the urinary bladder or kidneys. So it's very important to try to keep the teeth clean. He's just got a tiny bit of tartar on his teeth, but not bad. There are a lot of things you can do at home to help care for the teeth by not only providing good nutrition, but also um, some people are willing to brush their dog's teeth. So that's something that can really help prevent visits to the veterinarian.
Another source of problems with lots of dogs are ear infections. Uh, Willie's ears are pretty good. Um, some small breeds like William have accumulation of a lot of hair in the ear canal. That's something that you or a groomer can help to keep out of there so that we don't have problems with infection. Um, his canal looks nice and clean. The, this is called the pinna of the ear or the flap. That should look just a nice pink. It shouldn't be red or thick or painful. Um, you shouldn't smell any foul odors coming from the ear or see any significant wax accumulation. You can also sometimes get grass seeds in the ear or parasites like ticks will get down in there. So you want to make sure that you check these at least once a week and that everything looks good in there. Something else you need to check on your dog is their genital area. So since William's a little boy, we want to look here and make sure that there isn't any swelling or that there isn't any abnormal discharge or matting or soiling around his little boy parts. But they look really good, so I don't think that's a problem. The other thing in the rear end of the dog, and you may have heard of these, or maybe you haven't, are the anal glands. Especially small dogs and some larger dogs um, need to sometimes have these glands emptied, and usually that's maybe oh, every two months or so to have that done. Um, if they're not emptied on a regular basis, you can sometimes get, get a situation where they're too full and then they'll get an infection. But if you're noticing an odor in this area, the most likely thing is the anal glands and those may need to be expressed. Some people will do that at home, but the majority of people don't want to deal with that. So they take them to the vet or the groomer. It's Muffy's turn. Okay, so she wants to show you that she's different than Willie and that she has a different genital area here. And again, with the girl dogs, you want to make sure you don't see any soiling or matting, that the hair is kept trim around the area. And she looks just fine. Another thing with girl dogs is that sometimes they can have problems with their mammary glands. There's actually, they can get breast cancer just like women can. So you want to make sure that you're feeling this area when you pet them a couple times a week. And if you notice any swelling or bumps or redness, then make sure you take a visit to the veterinarian. I want you to be aware that a number of the things we've pointed out here can be very separate topics on their own and could be separate videos. But it's important for you to remember too that there are things your veterinarian is trained to see that you won't be able to notice. So never let this take the place of a veterinary exam. I hope this has been a valuable lesson in home health care. Remember that to ensure the health of your pet companion, you want to make sure that you have a visit to the veterinarian at least once a year for a young healthy pet and two or more times a year for a senior pet. Thanks for watching. Seeing your dog act ill can be kind of scary, and on this episode of Talking Dogs, we're going to tell you about a few of those warning signs that you can look out for. Number one, pale gums. An easy to check sign of illness is pale gums. Normally a dog's gums will be a bubblegum pink or close to it. It's a good idea to check your dog's gums when they are healthy so you can have a reference point. Pale gums can mean a host of different things from dehydration to bloating and to cancer. Paleness isn't the only thing you should look out for in gums. Any discoloration should be a cause for concern whether it's purple, yellow, blue, or bright red. Number two, labored breathing. Difficulty breathing is a bad sign in humans and dogs alike. A healthy dog will take about 20 to 24 breaths per minute, and the breathing should seem effortless. Some signs of labored breathing are noisy breathing, nostrils flaring, chest and stomach moving more than normal, and breathing with an open mouth while not panting. Labored breathing can mean a few things, such as pneumonia or foreign objects in the breathing pathways. Number three, lethargy. This doesn't just mean that your dog is tired. Lethargy would be if your dog is less enthusiastic about an activity that normally excites them. If your dog is lethargic for longer than 24 hours, contact your vet. Lethargy can be a symptom of numerous ailments and can sometimes be caused by medications. It's important to keep an eye out and make sure that your dog is actually lethargic and not just tired from a long day. Number four, a temperature under 99 degrees or over 104 degrees. This one might be a little more difficult than the others because dogs are naturally warmer than humans, with an average body temperature between 101 and 103 degrees. Just like in humans, fevers are caused by infections or inflammations. Taking a dog's temperature can be unpleasant for you and your dog, but it is sometimes necessary. 
Using a rectal or ear thermometer is a great way to tell if your dog is running fever, and you can even find thermometers specifically for your dogs. Number 5. Poor Appetite Just like lethargy, a dog with low appetite should be observed for 24 hours before reporting it to your vet. Sometimes dogs can just be picky and bratty. The list of things that cause a loss of appetite is too long to say here, but your vet will know how to help. Again, this behavior should be observed over a period of time to ensure that your dog isn't just trying to get you to feed him a nice juicy steak. Number 6. Excessive Salivation Some dogs drool more than others, so it's best to recognize when your dog is drooling more than usual. Excessive drooling or salivation can be a sign of many dental diseases or heat stroke. If you believe your dog is suffering from some type of heat exhaustion, the best course of action is to get them in a cool place immediately and give them some cool water. If heat isn't the case, a vet visit would be the best thing to do. Number 7. Urinating more than usual. If your dog is suddenly waking you up at night to go out or consistently urinating in the house, something might be wrong. If these two behaviors happen over a 24 to 48 hour time frame, you should consult your vet. Some other things you should keep an eye out for are discolored urine, discomfort while peeing, or an increased urgency. Thanks for watching. We hope you and your pup have a long and healthy life. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Live long and prosper. Let's learn how to brush the dog's teeth properly. Brushing your dog's teeth at home is the easiest and inexpensive way to keep their teeth and gums healthy. Dogs don't get cavities, but still. They can develop problems like tartar and plaque buildup and gingivitis. But it's not just bad breath, yellow teeth, or plaque you have to worry about. As like humans, these canine dental problems can actually lead to life-threatening infections and issues including heart, liver, and kidney disease. Before we start, please make sure you like the video at the end and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please hit the bell button to get notified every time we post our new video. Also, please follow and like us on Instagram and Facebook. Here's how to practice good dog dental care that will extend your dog's life. Step first, find the right time. Try and choose a time when your dog has had a decent amount of exercise, so he's more inclined to sit still for the procedure. Remember to start slow and don't do it forcefully. Quit right away if your dog gets agitated. Step second, get your tools. You're going to need a dog toothbrush with soft bristles. If you don't have a specially designed toothbrush, don't worry. You can use a kid's toothbrush also, or just use your finger as a toothbrush. You can't brush your teeth without toothpaste, right? Now you're going to need toothpaste specially designed for dogs. I'll tell you why. Most human toothpaste includes fluoride sodium laurel sulfate and xylitol, which are extremely poisonous to dogs if swallowed. Dog's toothpaste has special enzymes that help to break down the tartar or plaque from the teeth. They come in poultry or beef, dog-friendly flavors, which are the best options to start off with. Tasty, dry-chewing treats to reward them at the end. Step third, take your position. Always take that position in which your dog is comfortable. Don't try threatening positions like stand above your dog, hold them down between your legs, try to kneel or sit beside or in front of them. Step fourth, get them prepared. Take your finger and start rubbing it into their teeth and gums slowly. This will make them used to the feel of something rubbing against their teeth. Put little pressure while doing it. You may need to do it three to four times before you jump to the next step. Step fifth, taste the toothpaste. Put some toothpaste on your finger and let them sniff and taste it. Let them lick it off your finger to get used to the taste and texture of it. If after a few days they stop licking it, then it's time to try a new flavor. Step six, try it with a toothbrush. Lift their lip to expose their teeth and gums. Start gently brushing their canines and then shift to the molars. 
The bristles should be inclined at 45 degrees to the teeth and brush them in a circular motion, which will help the bristles massage the gum line and clear away plaque. Brush the canines first for five to six seconds only, as the enzymatic toothpaste will soften up the tartar or plaque by itself. So you don't have to brush the teeth vigorously as you do yours. Once you're done with canines, and if your dog is still fine with it, then move to the upper molars, which tend to quickly build more tartar. If you can get the insides, great. But if you can't get to them as well, don't stress too much. Her coarse tongue helps keep that area cleaner. Step 7. Reward them. Once you are done with brushing, reward them with their favorite treat for being such a good dog throughout the process and plenty of praise. Or you can also give chew bone or a toy that are made to clean teeth. A vet's best advice is to brush your dog's teeth regular as you brush yours. And grown dogs can learn to become comfortable with dog teeth cleaning. But make things easier for yourself by working with your dog as a puppy. Your vet should include a dental examination with a normal checkup, but ask for it if they don't. Last but not least, whether you brush their teeth or not, you should have a look inside their mouth every week or so. If you notice any of these signs of dental problems like bad breath, change in eating or dog chewing habits, pawing at the face or mouth, depression, excessive drooling, misaligned or missing teeth, discolored, broken, missing or crooked teeth, red, swollen, painful or bleeding gums, yellowish brown tartar crust along the gum line, bumps or growth within the mouth, then you should take your dog to the vet. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share our video if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe.